Fallout New Vegas is a fun new game with a simple premise. What if Chandler Bing was the only character from Friends that survived the nuclear apocalypse? Oh, Chandler, could your friends be any more dead? You play as Kramer from Seinfeld, who also survived the nuclear apocalypse because he's been hiding out in a bunker ever since that fateful night at the Laugh Factory in 2005. <laughs> Chandler is intent on being the only sitcom star from the 90s in the post-apocalypse, so he kidnaps Kramer, ties him up, and treats him to a new form of cancellation. Sorry you got twisted up in this scene. From where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. You're awake. How about that? Whoa, easy there, easy. You've been out cold a couple of days now. Why don't you just relax a second? Get your bearings. Let's see what the damage is. I find that I survived a gunshot wound to the head, and a kindly old doctor has rescued me and brought me back to his home. To my chagrin, I find out that the doctor is a close talker, much like Judge Reinhold. I've heard about you. <laughs> Judge Reinhold gets me to take an aptitude test, which goes very poorly, to say the least. Sorry, son. I fixed up your head as best I knew how. I guess I missed a spot. After the doctor apologizes for making me stupid, he puts me through a psychological exam, which reveals that I'm a menace to society and have no business being let back into everyday life. Hmm. Sometimes when you give tests like this, you learn more than you was hoping for, and I reckon that ain't always the best thing. But I guess maybe it explains a thing or two about your predicament. After giving me a diagnosis of insanity, the doctor lets me raid his medicine cabinet and sends me on my way. But try not to get killed anymore. Thanks for the sound advice, Doc. I head outside and run into a robot named Victor. I ask Victor where I can find Chandler, but he's about as useful as a screen door on a submarine. Can't say that I'm familiar with the rascals. Some of the fine folks in town not be able to help you out with that. I'm getting thirsty, so I head over to the local bar to see if I can grab a cold one. Well, here's to feeling good all the time. To my dismay, the bartender is gone, so I make my way up to the abandoned schoolhouse to see if I can scrounge something from the teacher's lounge. I crack open a safe and snag the good stuff, which goes right down the hatch. After about six or seven of those, I try to ride a bighorner, but to no avail. I head down the road on foot to look for clues as to where Chandler might be hiding out, and along the way I spot the Geico Gecko, who I send back to hell from whence he came. I spot a settlement on the horizon, and some trooper tries to warn me not to enter, which of course I do anyway. It's your ass, don't say you weren't warned. It's your ass, 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 it's your ass. His buttocks are sublime. I almost lose those sublime buttocks thanks to a couple of pesky landmines. I try to get a better look at the town, but the welcome committee isn't so welcoming, uh -huh. and I'm forced to defend myself. <laughs> whoa. I go snooping around for more contraband, but as I leave this abandoned shack, this guy tries to pull a fast one on me. I run into a mailbox and give it a look, because as my old friend used to say, When you control the mail, you control information. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, Newman tragically passed away when the bombs dropped, but his spirit lives on. Some old timer at a casino tells me the town sheriff got kidnapped, so I set out to rescue this moron. I get myself in and out of a little trouble, sneak past a couple of the guards, but I find myself in dire straits when I run into a dude with a flamethrower. I finally track down this douchebag sheriff and try to help him escape, but he's so inept that he gets murdered with a tire iron. I don't really have time to give him a proper burial, so instead I just kind of prop him on the couch so he can rest peacefully. <laughs> yep, there we go. Doesn't he look like an angel? I tell the old man that the sheriff died a warrior's death of getting tire ironed from behind, and as a reward he tells me that I have to go find them a replacement. I make haste through the vast dark of the night and head north to the prison where this other sheriff is hiding out. And, and yeah, I realize this is starting to sound like a Cormac McCarthy novel. Like a thief in the night, I walk the perimeter of the prison where I hatch a dastardly plan. Go up to the front door and ask them if I can come in. Well, I don't know. Dep I go to plan B, which includes shooting the guard in the head. It turns out the prisoners, uh, they didn't really care for that much, so I keep doing plan B all over the jail until I finally find the sheriff. Well, that was, that was after I taught some guy named Scrambler not to bring brass knuckles to a gunfight. I have a look around and I'm dismayed that the prisoners defaced this portrait of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Ruth Conda forever. As a side note, I really love this tweet, so much so that I called my buddy Jack Nicholson and asked him if he would do a reading, which he obliged. Just told my 10 year old daughter about hashtag RBG. She had tears in her eyes. And then she did the Wakanda pose and said, Hashtag Ruth Conda forever. Which is the sort of pop culture crossover that I can celebrate. And now that I've successfully killed 15 seconds with a complete non sequitur of a joke, I track down the sheriff and try to convince him to take the new job. Assuming an NCR pardon comes with the job, and it had better. I also need to be able to do things my own way. There's always a goddamn fucking catch in this game. So I start heading south to the NCR outpost, but the journey is more perilous than I expected, and I run into the undead corpses of Ross, Rachel, Joey, and Phoebe. I tell Joey, how you doing, with a stick of dynamite, and I find that Ross and his limbs were truly on a break. I spot the outpost on the horizon, and once inside, I use my unfathomable Kramer Riz to get the sheriff a pardon. Alright. If his sentence was closing up, I can see about getting him pardoned. Prim is important to our trade up from California, so having someone there owes us a favor. That couldn't hurt. I let the sheriff know that he's no longer unemployed. And now, I steal my resolve and set back on the path to find Chandler. I look through my things and notice that the first sheriff, you know, the one that died of getting tire ironed in the ass, anyway, he left me a clue that may help me on my journey. Now those tough looking fellows must be great cons. I recognize those funny helmets and leather vests from stories I've heard. So what are they doing with that dapper gentleman who wears a checked suit? I wouldn't mind a suit like that. They're talking about heading south toward Nipton, then west to Novak where they'll meet up with someone. It's off to Nipton I go to find Chandler and bring him to justice. Maybe I can speed up my journey with a ride from this big horner. Your ass, don't say you weren't warned. 